Hello and welcome to Ali Gloom. Today we're going to be talking about the mysterious Sanrio character called Pinky Lily. Uh, she's a little pink bear from the company Sanrio and she was featured on the English Sanrio website between 2002 and 2006. She was a US exclusive character um, as she was never featured on Sanrio's Japanese site or any other international Sanrio sites. There's also no evidence that her merch was sold outside of the US either. She does have a wiki fan page on the Hello Kitty wiki, with the sources all being listed as her character page, which can be seen on archive.org, um, and the 2011, 2012, 2014, and a 2015 happy birthday announcement for her on the Hello Kitty blog. Um, they show that she's a bear with pink fur, her birthday is March the 22nd, and she has a friend who is a little like Bumblebee, and his name is Boo Bee. On a 2016 Sanrio Facebook post I found, um, it also states that she adores cherry blossoms. So let's begin the deep dive. Sanrio is a Japanese company known for making a series of characters, particularly with a cute aesthetic, slash cute culture, slash kawaii culture, which in Japan is allegedly considered not a trend, but rather an intrinsic part of someone's likes. Sanrio's best known character is obviously Hello Kitty. It was founded by Shintaro Suji in 1960 and it was initially a silk company called the Yamanashi, oh, sorry, Yamanashi Silk Company, but in 1962 he expanded the business and started selling rubber sandals with flowers painted onto them. He said he noticed that just by adding a cute design to a product it sold very well. He then started using existing cartoon characters to add to Sanrio products. For example, in the late 1960s, Sanrio made merch with Snoopy after acquiring the Japanese licensing rights. They mostly stuck to making merch kind of like centered around gift giving occasions um, with the philosophy of small gift, big smile. And they kind of appealed to that small and expensive gift idea market. The idea was to make a variety of practical, affordable and small products that were cute. It wasn't until 1973 that Sanrio changed the company name to Sanrio. The European Sanrio website says that the name came from the Spanish words San and Rio apparently, with San being shortened from Santo meaning saint or sacred and Rio meaning river. Suji though revealed in the book a Kori ga Sanrio no Himitsu des, which in English is called These are Sanrio's Secrets. He said that Yamanashi, uh, which obviously was the previous company's name, had an alternative reading of Sanri, um, and then the remaining O was taken from the O sound that people make when they're excited to make Sanrio. In 1973, Suji then hired his own designers for Sanrio characters so the company wouldn't have to pay royalty fees, um, which smart business move. Korochan was then the first Sanrio character that was born, and Hello Kitty was then added to a lineup of characters in 1974, and merchandise was released the next year, um, and henceforth, has made them the most sales she has. Um, a Hello Kitty fact is actually from 1976 to 1980, Yonokubu Setsuko uh, developed Hello Kitty, but from 1980, Yuko Yamaguchi has been her primary designer and has an alleged US $9 million net worth thanks to her self-proclaimed partner in life. I would also recommend looking at Yamaguchi's photos because she has a very, very awesome style and she has like really bright red hair and really cool outfits. Today, other well-known Sanrio characters, they include My Melody, Karomi, Karofi, Cinema Roll, uh, Batsmaru, Pom Pom Porin, Gudutama, Gretzko, many more obviously. Little twin stars were actually created by Suji himself, and in 2011, Sanrio Global acquired the rights to the Mr. Men characters, and currently also earned the Japanese rights to the Peanuts characters. Sanrio is known to add up to three new characters a year, um, so they obviously retire older characters that aren't performing as well. They've also produced movies, cartoon series, theme parks, stores, online games, books. Um, they have an animatronics branch and they have obviously expanded internationally. Uh, for example, they added Sanrio Inc. to the company, which is their American branch with an office in South San Francisco, California. Um, and today over 50,000 Sanrio products are sold in over 70 countries. The Western Hemisphere products in particular are sold in upwards of 12,000 locations. It is worth noting that in 2004, Nakajima USA was given owning and operating rights for all Sanrio products in the US, therefore they are in charge of managing the relationships between individual licensed stores and supplying products to these stores. Nakajima USA was founded in 2000, 
um, and it's a wholly owned subsidiary of Nakajima Japan, which was founded in 1919 as a family-run company that designed and made licensed plushies, collectibles, and seasonal toys and gifts. It has produced and distributed products of brands like Harajuku Lovers and Sesame Street. Uh, they operate in LA and San Francisco with sales, store division, and marketing, finance, and operations being based in LA. And their warehouse facilities, customer service, credit, and merchandise control are in San Francisco. This includes 49 independently run Sanrio stores, 47 Nakajima USA corporate owned Sanrio stores, and wholesale gift business, which includes 2,000 plus accounts nationwide. In June 2020, Suji actually stepped down as the president of the company after over 60 years. Um, at age 92 years old, he passed down the baton to his 31 year old grandson, Tomokuno Suji. Pink Lily isn't listed on any Sanrio Wikipedia page. Um, as I said, she's only on the fandom Hello Kitty wiki page and there's really no trace of her left on the Sanrio English website and it's unknown when she was removed from it. As mentioned before, she did feature on a happy birthday, po on a happy, on a happy birthday post on 2011, 2012, 2014 and 2015. Um, these Hello Kitty blog links though are no longer viewable and I can't find any on like the Wayback Machine or archive.org. I only found a random comment on an old blog page that doesn't show up at all anymore with the links on the Wayback Machine that says lol Sanrio removed them from the character page. I also tried VPNing in America but the sources that show up aren't any different to when you view in Australia. I did message and scout through Reddit, Twitter, Fandom Wiki, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, the general internet and also LinkedIn. Um, and two lovely Twitter users did respond and collectively they said that they don't really have any memory aside from her merchandise and that they thought she was very very cute, um, particularly because she was very feminine and pink and they felt like there wasn't many options at the time for that. Um, they also said that my Melody was the most feminine at the time and so yeah, as kind of that other option they were given, she was very attractive to children. A Japanese Twitter user did write on December 29, 2021 as well, the official Japanese Sanrio character Dictory lacks a lot of them, but some of it's probably due to copyright or other special cases like Pinky Lily or those canonically questionable Sanrio Wave subsidiary characters. Now, when I read this, I was kind of unsure what the Sanrio Wave meant, um, especially since Sanrio Wave subsidiary characters, I was like, I haven't heard of that as a phrase, um, but I believe what they're referencing is Sanrio Wave Co. Limited or Sanrio Wave Hong Kong Co Limited, which is a 2000 founded subsidiary of Sanrio. Its goal is to distribute Sanrio related content slash entertainment throughout Asia and the rest of the world. It works with different telecommunication networks in Asia and it creates original publications. In my assumption, they would be meaning that Pinky Lily was made to be a subsidiary character and that she was never gonna get the same treatment as main characters, which is why probably then so little effort went into giving her any like internet archivals. I also cannot for the life of me find where she was discontinued. I cannot find out any financial reports, annual reports, articles, or people randomly talking about it. Um, it's probably just because we're all too young and probably didn't have social media accounts and probably didn't really care that much. Um, so my assumption is perhaps that she was underperforming and Sanrio wanted to discontinue her and slash or expand more time and money into cartoon and digital online content since they did shift quite a lot of their focus onto these types of projects during the late 2000s, early 2010s. Additionally, Sanrio is also known according to the New York Times journalist Ken Belson, um, who's the co-author with Brian Brenmer of the 2004 book Hello Kitty, The Remarkable Story of Sanrio and the Billion Dollar Feline Phenomenon. I said that wrong and I'm not going to say it right, so I'm not going back on it. They were known, Sanrio is known to spend almost no money on advertising, they said. And Japan actually accounts for over 40% of Sanrio sales, so it makes sense that maybe a US exclusive character might not be performing that well relatively to others. I turned my efforts to try to look at the history of the wiki fandom page, and there's only four users who have edited Pinky Lily's page. This is O O Charmy Kitty O Little O, D O C O B O A O. Emily Harmonizer 02 and Sweetberry Milk. Tommy Kitty is an admin and has a bureaucrat label within the fandom. Um, they've made 8,891 edits and 69 posts total to the Hello Kitty webpage when I was writing the script. So they're a person that you go to if you want to report vandalisms, so they can fix it and block users. Um, they adopted the Pinky Lily page back on the 3rd of February 2017. 
D-O-C-O-B-O-A-R -O -O has 48 edits and 9 posts on the Hello Kitty wiki. Um, and their account is just, I definitely believe, it's probably been abandoned because it appears to just be someone kind of like messing around in the wiki. They were just kind of like adding tags, removing content, adding categories and just kind of weird stuff. They weren't doing much, um, just strange things. And Charmy Kitty did reach out to their message wall on the 26th of March 2017 to ask, Hi, D-O-C-O-B-O-A-O. I'm confused about what you want to do with a Pinky Lily page. You added categories, then added to the info box, then you marked it for deletion. What are you trying to do? Can I help? And a response never came and use a small cute just told Charmy Kitty to block them. Um, although I should note, just to give them the benefit of the doubt, maybe they were just a young child and they didn't know what they were doing. Um, but I think Charmy Kitty's message was wonderful and I think that we could all learn from it because they were like, oh, a nice hello, I'm confused, what are you trying to do, can I help? And it's very lovely. I was also annoying and I did reach out to Charmy Kitty via their wall page and they were very kind and let me know that they don't unfortunately have any info. Um, but I just think they're lovely and I wish them a wonderful life. Uh, then Streetberry Milk has only 17 edits and the account also seems to be abandoned. Um, they just made visual edits and also source edits. Then Emily Harmonizer 02 only has 10 edits and 2 posts. Um, and the account also has been diso like disabled globally by user choice or the fandom it says. Um, it seems they just kind of changed Boobies wiki page and it's so bad that's not really even worth mentioning to be honest. They just also changed visual things. Should also mention it's kind of funny to me that Pinky Lily and Boobie are actually both original characters for the US. Um, but the B was made exclusively to be her friend and there's like no info. No at all. They didn't even feature on all the merch so I'm not sure what the point of that was. Um, I was also talking to my friend about this and obviously they reckon the bee's name's a little bit weird because it's a bit memeable, um, which probably, I don't know if that was a marketing choice, I just thought that was very interesting. Much of Pinky Lily's merchandise is found on eBay, Depop, Zippy, which seems to be an Eastern European secondhand selling website, Poshmark and Worthpoint, which also seem to be European. I'm Australian, we literally have like eBay and Gumtree, <laughs> like that's all we use. And Facebook, that's it. Um, but anyway, Pinky Lily's colour scheme, it's purple, pink and blue and she has some different dresses throughout her merch. One of her dresses is a little blue dress with like some kind of cotton looking circles, like pom-poms, um, around her arms and the base of her dress. She has a little blue flower in her hand, which I kind of think looks like a bit of a cartoonized lily, uh, with two little kind of like strings of beads sticking out of it. Another dress she has is a pink dress, which has like little flower petals around her sleeves and a pink flower on her head. All her merch on it is all copyrighted 2002 Sanrio Co Limited, uh, with the same font type as well for her name, which according to AI font detectors allegedly might be something like Circus Dog or Candy Corn Overdose. So let's go through the merch I did find online. She has a 12 centimeter long sticker sheet with her in like different poses and it's all pink with purple background. Uh, she has a metal lunchbox bag with like purple flowers and light pink on it. She has a pink purse with a little flower clip. It's all pink um, and inside's fabric and it's plastic. A spiral note case with rainbows in the background and like a blue flower and you know a pink gem. Uh, there's a pink keychain with her on it and like a plastic pink keychain ring. She's got what's, it's like a fabric plushy type backpack. Um, it's all pink and it's very cute. She's got a pink cup, a small pink plushy, um, which some of the plushies seem to fade to more purple colour though. She's got a stationery set which includes spiral notebooks, 16 crayons, a notepad, band-aids, rubber, pen, sharpener, stapler, notes, sticky tape dispenser and a plastic pencil case. There's a ceramic coin box, a little crayon bag, there's a little t-shirt notebook with little blue frogs on it, capsule mascots um, out of a collection of 20 with small plushies, an alarm clock in clear plastic, uh, there's another bag which is pink and purple, there's a small plastic pencil case with pencils, notepad, a clear plastic bag case and a ruler. Weirdly as well, I should not throw this in, some of these are made in China, Japan or Taiwan, like it's not necessarily that much merch. But even things that came in like a set, like the stationery sets, if you look individually at the different items, some might be like, oh, the pencil's made in China. You know, the washi tip was made in Japan. The staplers were made in Taiwan. It's vanilla scented cased gummy novelty erasers, a coin purse and clutch, 
plastic bag with scissors, ruler, pens, stickers, and something yellow with a lid, a letter set, a crossbody plastic bag, table plastic bin, a star notepad, key cover, bean shaped bag, and face shaped bag. Finally, a mug, a pillow, a tea set, a round lunchbox, and a locked plastic bag with a pencil and sticker set. <laughs> Now that we have gone through all her merch, um, there's something I particularly would like to discuss. There's something I particularly like about Pinky Lily is how well she fits into Sanrio's branding of cute culture and how much similarity she probably unintentionally has to Hello Kitty, so just hear me out. In an article titled, What Will Sanrio's New Leadership Mean for Hello Kitty? by Ashley Westerman on NPR, Westerman discusses Christine Yano, an anthropologist at the University of Hawaii and the author of Pink Globalization, Hello Kitty's Trek Across the Pacific's work. Uh, Yano states that Hello Kitty has a very sparse depiction and an ambiguous background story which makes her very historically and culturally flexible. And Pinky Lily is also very sparse and ambiguous, although probably not on purpose. Yana also explains that Hello Kitty is not just popular because the products are cute. They explain that as well, particularly in the 1970s, young girls and women loved Hello Kitty because she acts as a way to express yourself. Yano says if you had a product, a totally utilitarian product, take a rubber sandal or something like that, and if you add a cute element, it becomes this huge value added. The value being kawaii or cuteness. Something that would be, of course, visually attractive and emotionally reassuring things like a daisy, an apple, and eventually a cat. Something Suji did do was acknowledge as well that as Sanrio's demographic was growing up, um, they were also having their own children, obviously the demographic was getting older, so they started to appeal to young women and children, um, which they did by focusing on making tasteful yet cute items. And I think that's something that wasn't considered with Pinky Lily, which would make me assume she was never meant to be a long-term character, but just an exclusive and she was always going to be retired after a few years because she's super cute but I don't see her appealing to a wide range of audience aside from feminine children and feminine young women um, particularly who obviously based off the merch just want stationery. I also really liked Sara Kavarovic's 2013 Hello Kitty is a brand made of cuteness paper which argues that in Japan children like the small aspects of products while women like the innocence and nostalgia. They said though in America, children like the colours and women like the youthful appeal and easy availability of a product. And I like Pinky Lily because I feel like she kind of nails that for Americans. She's got the pink colours, she's got the really cute colours, and for women, she might be a bit too youthful, I'm going to say actually, but she's very youthful, um, but doesn't have the easy availability obviously nowadays. Kovarovic also highlights that some rare uses pretty simple designs in their characters. Um, which allow you to then easily project emotions onto them, especially for Hello Kitty they were referencing. Uh, well, I think Pinky Lily's design, you can kind of do that, but it might be a bit too involved with some of her dresses. There's just a bit too much maybe going on for you to fully project onto her. In Melanie Machette's 2016 Western Michigan University Honors thesis, Hello Kitty's long-standing cross-cultural popularity in the United States and Japan, they say that Sanrio has stayed so popular in Japan because of how easy it is to buy their products. And they expanded the demographic from that gift-giving idea for children, like stationery we initially discussed, to include women by associating themselves with luxury items, um, which, because like I said, Suji wanted to expand the demographic because people were getting older, and one of the ways they did that was allegedly um, through, yeah, expanding to luxury items. They did this via licensing agreements, including with Bandai, Takara, Matsushita Toasters, and a champagne pink Mitsubishi mini car, and just from there they kept going. 
But for America, it was a little bit different because initially in 1976, Senbrio was just going for like the same business model that they were using in Japan. But in the early 2000s, they actually shifted to localize their strategies for an American market, which is credited as helping them expand so successfully into America. So what they started doing was they would send out from the Japan HQ like an abstract level marketing strategy and then each local office across the world they're able to customize this plan and give a personalized touch to the location. For example, in local offices, there would be informal meetings that were held where employees would actually pick items from a product catalog that they wanted to sell and their desired sales levels and local subsidiaries were also allowed to choose their own licenses. So this particularly allowed for the American Sanrio office to choose partnerships with companies Americans would wanna buy for. Um, these variations between companies would also give Americans a sense and obviously other countries um, but they'd give them a sense of cultural sensitivity with regards to catering to the country's own preferences and allow Sanrio partners to have the freedom to come up with their own ideas. So for example, American Sanrio, they've partnered with Major League Baseball, Vans and Sephora. Sanrio also lists four qualities that each of their characters must have, particularly for marketing and like that partnership, which is they must stand out. As the face of communication, Sanrio's characters set your company apart from the rest. Get attention. Catch the eye of prospective customers. The unmistakable faces of Sanrio characters are sure to grab attention. Affinity slash familiarity. Inspire feelings of intimacy, familiarity, and comfort with your products and advertising. And internationality. Utilize a form of communication that transcends national boundaries and cultures. Using these four qualities, uh, Sanrio also focuses on connecting with fans in like a more organic marketing approach. They like to do it less commercially. They like doing something like celebrity endorsements by sending celebrities free products to get them to try, uh, showing off games, etc. And I think that makes sense why Pinky Lily is something that Little Girls probably do really like. She has that affinity, she has that cuteness, you know, and if you saw someone endorsing her, you probably would want to go buy her products because she's very, very cute. Um, and I think as well, she probably, she probably didn't have that internationality because she was a US exclusive. But bringing a US exclusive would probably make Americans a bit more excited. Like, oh, it's an exclusive. People like having an exclusive. So it was probably a bit more exciting in that regard. And I don't know how popular she was in media advertisement, though, because, again, they don't really advertise Sanrio commercially. Um, and I can't find any organic marketing that was done. It just seems that, like, she had her products sold and people saw them and thought they were cute and bought them. I also think that a good point about Sanrio designs come from Boxington's 14th of March 2018 blog post called Sanrio Art Analysis and they say how Sanrio characters are simple, they have bold colours, they have no shading and they have thick outlines which helps all give contrast and a cute cartoon aesthetic which leading on to then makes them very malleable which is something Hello Kitty is very popular for because she's been given a bunch of hobbies to appeal to a wider range of customers. She can be super, super pink and super feminine. She can be punk. She can be sporty. And all of this allows to create a range of products tailored to a range of wider audiences. But Pinky Lily doesn't have that range. It seems like she was really just designed for feminine little girls and women who like stationery. She's very feminine in her appearance and her color palette choice. And with that, that's really all that you can find online about her. Um, at least I did try to see if I could find anything in Google Translate. There was like some things that popped up in Italian, but it was nothing new info. So that's really all I could find after hours and hours, like weeks of scouring the internet. Um, but let me know if you have any memories of her, if there's anything that you'd like to add. Um, yeah, if you really have any memories at all or any info, I'd love to definitely hear it. I, I've spent so many hours researching this and this is all I could find. Um, also, let me know what your favourite Sanrio character is probably and why. Um, compared to especially, I think, Pinky Lily and her unsure success. Like, compared to Hello Kitty, obviously, you're never going to be as big. But I think it would be very interesting to hear. Thank you. Thank you.